And you're very welcome to our bonus mini episode on uh, renewable energy on the 180 Degrees podcast series. I'm Sinead Ryan, the host, and I am delighted to be joined by Margie McCarthy, who is Director of Research and Policy Insights at SEAI. Now, Margie, here we go with some of the questions that regularly come in on the issue of renewables uh, from the general public. Uh, So the first one for you, I hear a lot about wind and solar development in Ireland, but what are the other renewable energy? energy sources available right now and what do they contribute to the grid? It's it's kind of an interesting question, actually, because we do always think of renewable energy and the grid. And and that's because we have been mostly successful in getting a renewable share onto our electricity grid, more so than we have been in any other sector. So it does actually break down between electricity, heat and transport. In electricity, yes, wind and solar are the major contributors. We should that nod the cap to hydropower in, in years past. Hydropower was a major contributor as well of renewables. When I say major, uh, probably small numbers, but it, it was our, one of our biggest contributors. We've exploited most of that now, uh, so it probably won't have as big an impact as we move forward. Um, but then when you look at heat, we'll have, it'll be leaning into electricity with heat pumps and ambient, you know, so air heat pumps and, and ground source heat pumps. Um, but also bioenergy will, will play a role in heat. Um, and now, dist- when you say bioenergy, talk, what, what, what is that then? So there are aspects of heat. If you think about heat, it breaks down into how we heat our rooms. So space heating, uh, whether it's in an office or whether it's at home, and then also heating water. And they're uh, only to a certain temperature. And a lot of that can be provided through through heat pumps um, and maybe some biomass in, in some circumstances so that would be kind of burning wood chips and that, and that type of thing. Um, when you get into industrial heat, so that's where you have maybe pharmaceuticals or a process whereby you need a very, very high heat. You have bioenergies like biofuels, which is basically most of our bioenergy is using waste from food, from vegetable oils, from um, composting from, um, you know, all, all types of waste, wood chippings and converting it in some way to a bioenergy fuel that could be a bioliquid or a biogas, for example. OK, good. So lots really a bigger range than maybe most people would have thought. Yeah. Uh, OK, I've recently switched to a new energy provider. How green is their green energy on offer? Now, Margie, we do see this. The companies are climbing over themselves to tell us how renewable and green and 100 percent everything is. What what can we believe? So we know that we're, our electricity share in Ireland is about 40% renewable. So we aren't 100% renewable on the electricity that's generated and distributed in the Republic of Ireland. But we do have a, a as part of being a member of the EU, a trading scheme where you can buy green certificates. They're known as guarantees of origin. And what they do is they allow your supplier, so the person you pay for your electricity bill in Ireland, to be able to buy some uh, green certificates or GOs from other countries. So the, the the electricity is generated and distributed in another country. But what this supplier to you in Ireland is giving you is a guarantee that the total demand that's being supplied to you is a green supply. It's just not necessarily generated. So it's somebody else's Ireland. surplus uh, that is coming our way. So, yeah. so overall, it's green. It's just not all Irish green. Is that it? Absolutely. And okay. as we know, our ambition is to achieve 80% renewable renewable electricity by 2030. So that that share will begin to diminish down and we'll have more and more of it physically generated and distributed. And sure, maybe one day we'll be supplying it to the other nations in terms of green certificates. All right. Now, we have a business owner uh, who says, I own a large business and we're interested in installing solar PV to generate our own electricity. I understand the planning laws around this are complicated. Where do I start? Now, we do hear a lot about, you know, the issue with domestic houses and there's like if you if you use so much of your roof space for solar solar panels, you don't need planning and then you do for, for over that. How does it work in industry then? So that's actually a really timely question um, because SEI uh, just back in, in October opened the single point of contact for renewable projects, planning and consenting. So anyone who wants to check that out can go into SEI, just Google SEI single point of contact and they'll find it. But essentially what that has is details on all of the licensing and permitting that's required around renewable technologies. But in it, there is a finder tool. So you can go in and you can say, what 
what kind of developer are you? Are you, are you a small community? Are you a large industry member? The next question is, what kind of technology are you trying to deploy? So solar, there will be mm. all other kinds of technologies that you can take in there. Then what kind of outage? So, so what kind of power do you expect to be able to generate from it? Um, and then it asks you what construction stage you're in. Are, are you in planning and design? Are you building it? Or maybe you're, you know, repowering it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And what that does is it gives you a full listing then of the various permits and licenses that are required okay. for your process. It's so a, it's a it's pathway. A new, exactly, exactly. Good. It points you in the direction of where you need to go. Who who do you need to talk to? What are the decision makers in the planning system that are applicable to your technology? Well, that's great because, I mean, we have that with uh, several providers in the domestic market with the one stop shop, you know, and people then don't have to do all of the legwork by themselves. You know, they can be guided in a particular way. And of course, it's a good thing to do that if you're availing of any of the grants uh, that are that are there. So, so you get it in advance. OK, now, Margie, the last uh, question then is how this is the hard one, I think. How is planning progressing on offshore wind toward hitting our 2030 targets? Yeah, so offshore wind, we have significant targets. We we have a, a, a sea area that's about seven times the size of our land mass. So we, and, and they don't call it the Wild Atlantic Way for nothing. And um, <laughs> there is a significant amount of energy to harness out there. Um, but we had, an, I suppose, a slower system recently in trying to get things through planning and understanding where do I go to for what questions, what consenting, what environmental studies. And so an awful lot has been done to try and consolidate that under the Maritime Area Planning Act. Um, it's set up an authority called MARA and MARA has consolidated all of those planning decisions and consenting con- decisions. So so it's it's kind of like a one-stop shop for that part yeah. of it. Will um, it make it a little bit quicker then to get these projects through? Well, the aim is that all of these actions will accelerate it. Uh, similarly, we've had recent auctions where uh, developers now know uh, what sites will go ahead. There's an awful lot of work going towards having a plan led system as mm. well. So if you think about in on land, we tend to have, you know, local area plans where this area is residential, this will be, you know, commercial, this is a green area. So what we have to do is we have to try and look at our ocean area and be be considerate in that way as well. So where okay. what's an immunity area, what's a working area, what's a potential for renewable energy, taking on board all of the wonderful life that lives in the ocean as well that we have to, to work with and protect in, in all of this. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of common sense. And as you say, the sea mass is so much greater than our land mass. We sometimes just forget how powerful it really is and the resources that we have. OK, Marky McCarthy, thank you very much for that quick hit. And if you'd like to listen back to the full episode on renewables, which is episode six of the 180 Degrees podcast. Well, look, why don't you like and subscribe right now? And it means you're not going to miss any of the episodes or any of the fantastic expert guests that we have on uh, in the weeks past and indeed in the weeks to come. Uh, It's been lovely having your company. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you all next time.